Hello guys and gals and welcome. So today we are going to be going over the story of Diablo 2. Um, from beginning to end. Um, the Diablo 2 story is quite long, so prepare yourself for quite the journey. The beginning of the Great Conflict. Since the birth of reality itself, the high heavens and the burning hells have waged an endless war for anything of value within their realms of order and chaos. No side has gained much of anything at all for long, and in their struggle have often destroyed much of what they sought to claim. It is referred to as the Great Conflict, and all other wars and events, like the Sin War, fall under it. The story begins with Enarius, a powerful angel and member of the Angris Council. Tired of the constant fighting, he sees little point in their infinite war they are waging against hell. Convinced that there must be others, such as him, in both heaven and hell, Enarius starts to search for other individuals who share his views on the war. To his surprise, there are many such as himself, and together with Lilith, daughter of Mephisto, he leads a great exodus. Together they defect from heaven and hell and search for another place to live. They succeed in stealing the world stone and perform two tasks, which above all others will affect the course of history. They create sanctuary, the world of men, as a paradise and refuge from the great conflict. Create the Nephilim, the first humans. To protect the world from both heaven and hell, they used the stolen world stone. It acted as a protective barrier and effectively prevented angels and demons from either directly invading sanctuary or noticing its existence at all. However, it worked. It, however, how it exactly worked remains unclear, but work it did. The two races of heaven and hell tried to live peacefully with each other on sanctuary, and even mated with each other, spawning the first generation of humans, called the Nephilim. It quickly became apparent that the Nephilim were as powerful as their parents, and had the potential to be much, much more than any angel or demon. This caused struggle among the higher beings. Inarius wanted to kill the humans, as he viewed them as a threat to their own existence. Lilith, on the other hand, wanted to raise the Nephilim to an army, and have them fight both heaven and hell. The two began fighting, and Anarius cast out Lilith from Sanctuary and imprisoned her in the Void, claiming Sanctuary as his own. Many of the Nephilim were slain during this time, but some survived, like Bulkathos and Rothma. The latter became the servant of Trangul, a mystical dragon and guardian of Sanctuary. The Sin War all praises to Diablo, lord of terror and survivor of the dark evils. When he awakened from his long slumber, my lord and master spoke to me of secrets that few mortals know. He told me the kingdoms of the high heavens and the pits of the burning hells engage in an eternal war. He revealed the powers that have brought this discord to the realms of man. My lord has named the battle for this world and all who exist here the Sin War. As time went on, the prime evils discovered sanctuary, immediately realizing the potential of humanity as a weapon against heaven. They created a religion called the Triune. There, to lure humans to their side, Inarius thus similarly set up his own Cathedral of Light to combat the three. The two forces battled behind the scenes with each other on Sanctuary, while Heaven remained unknowing of Sanctuary's existence. The two religions waged a constant but seemingly petty war against each other, and the world was more or less unaffected. The two churches meddled in the everyday lives of humans sometimes, but none except for the most high-ranking of the church servants knew the true identities between the religions. They all changed. That all changed when Lilith broke free of her prison, returning to sanctuary. She once again sought to use humans to her own advantage and conquer both heaven and hell. In these events, a man named Oldysian, a distant descendant of Anarius and Lilith, got caught in her plots 
Unbeknownst to him, Lilith gave him magical powers and framed him, making it appear as though he had slain the servants of both the Triune and the Cathedral of Light. Lilith disguised herself as a human named Lilia and snared Yuldasian into doing as she wished. Yuldasian thought that these powers lay latent in all humans and followed by Mendeln, his younger brother, Serenthea, a long-time family friend infatuated with Aldacian and the daughter of the merchant Cyrus and Achilos, a childhood friend and archer, fled the town of Serum, fearing for their lives. The very people who once close friends and neighbors turned upon Aldacian, fearing his new abilities, and what it seemed that he did with them. Aldacian blamed the Triune and the Cathedral for this predicament, he was in, and so set off to awaken these powers in others, that they might live in a world of their own crafting, and not the triune or cathedral. The venture was a struggle at first, but with the unknown aid from Lilith, more and more people were found who could use magic, and they gathered under Oldesian. They became known as the Edrian, with Oldesian as their leader. These actions brought them turmoil. Lucian, leader of the Triune and son of Mephisto, sent formidable enemies to hunt down Oldesian, among them Malak, Deimos, Gulag, Astroga, the latter who also appears in other novels, most notably the Moon of the Spider. Mendeln during this time was noticed by Rathma. Rathma was the son of Inarius and Lilith, and first servant of Trangul, a great dragon connected to sanctuary, but aligned with neither heaven nor hell, Rathma trained Mendelin as an apprentice, and there they became the first two necromancers. Interesting. Lilith, in the meantime, understood that her plans could not be achieved unless something was done with the world stone. The crystal had been created by Anarius to both shield the world and to limit the powers of humans, so as long as it still stood, no human army of hers would ever wage war with heaven or hell. Aldician, however, was brought there, and after a brief brawl with Bolkathos, he was allowed into the world stone chamber with Rathma as his companion. After killing bat-like demons, Rathma, who thought, though doubtful he would succeed, suggested Aldacian attempt to change the world stone to better favor him and his people. What he did astonished Rathma, and later, Anarius as well, Aldacian had altered the structure of the crystal, something that not even Anarius could undo. This change had monumental consequences and not only stopped the weakening of the Nephilim, but in fact sped up the growth of their powers. Eventually, Anarius was dragged into the conflict, the tyrant ruler of Sanctuary. He had considered himself above Aldacian and refused to come into direct contact with him. Because of that belief, he sent his trusted assistant, Gamuel, to assassinate Aldacian. The plot failed, and Honorius resorted to even more desperate measures, a pact with Diablo himself. At this point, the human powers had grown immensely, and confrontation was imminent. Initially, Honorius did not view Aldacian as much of a threat, but as his efforts to stop the human continued to fail, Honorius became more and more desperate, though he refused to admit as much to himself. At this time, Anarius was approached by Diablo, and the prime evil offered him a pact. Together, the two sought to defeat Aldacian and his Edrim. At the same time, Tyriel discovered sanctuary, and soon thereafter the High Heavens was notified of the existence of this world. The High Heavens viewed Sanctuary and its inhabitants as an abomination to, the, to existence, and acted accordingly, sending their armies directly to Sanctuary. Trangul, the guardian of the Sanctuary, used his immense power to shield Sanctuary's location from the ang angels, but he could not hold it forever. Aldacian and Inarius also clashed, and that battle is without a doubt the fiercest battle that has ever taken place on the face of Sanctuary and likely ever will. Both wielded the strength of the gods, 
and continually changed the landscape surrounding them as they battled. And as, as they fought, a tear appeared in the sky as the hosts of angels finally reached an invaded sanctuary. Soon after, Aldisian's entire body infused with energy, he acquired a higher understanding of sanctuary itself and easily broke the bond between Anarius and the world stone. Anarius, without the immense amount of power to draw upon, was easily defeated by Aldisian and trapped in a prison until the Angris Council further decided his fate. Soon after the angels reached sanctuary, Tyrael found Aldisian and shackled him. Demons of the burning hells, determined not to let the angels destroy what they sought to exploit, erupted onto the landscape, and a three-way battle commenced. The angels battling on one side, the demons on the other, and Edrim stuck in the middle. Aldisian, still shackled, was forced to watch his people as they fought against both angel and demon. Overcome with emotion, he finally broke free of Tyrael's bonds and demanded the armies to stop. Surprisingly, they all became frozen in time. Aldisian then cleared the angels and demons from his world. He began changing the landscape back to how it was before all the destruction had taken place. As he did so, his powers refused to cooperate and instead destroyed the environment where he was trying to fix it. He realized the only thing he could do was to draw the destruction into himself, and so with all his might he did so. Finally, after taking in all the destruction that Sanctuary had suffered, Drangul guided him into the void and released it. He felt pressure building up again, this time for the final moment, and readied himself and his world for it. And when it came, it did so with an explosion of pure energy that ever so briefly shook Sanctuary to its foundations. Aldisian roared, not because of the pain, but rather the sheer ecstasy of his transformation. He was no longer a mere human, but something of which even angels and demons could not conceive. He was Sanctuary. For one moment, and all that surrounded it, his presence dwarfed that of Trangul, of any being near, his consciousness spread out above his treasured world where he looked at it one last time. The Reset After the battle, a gathering was held between the Angris Council and Mephisto. Sanctuary was all but destroyed, but all hope was not lost. Some, like Rathma, pleaded with the heavens to spare sanctuary. A vote was held between the angels. Imperius voted against sanctuary's existence, and Aureol argued strongly for it. The deciding vote was laid by Tyriel, who initially seemed to show little love for humanity, something which has evidently developed over the years since this event. Together with Mephisto, a deal was made between heaven and hell. Sanctuary was to live on its own, with no war brought there by heaven or hell. Humanity would choose for themselves what to do. In return for agreeing to this, Mephisto obtained custody of Inarius and took him to the burning hills. Mephisto sought Inarius because it was him and his daughter, Lilith, that was responsible for the creation of Sanctuary and the Nephilim. This was followed by a reset of the world. Time was reverted right to the point where Aldisian left his home village, and events were unmade so that this in the inhabitants of the sanctuary could mature on their own, without the influence of the triune or the cathedral. All memories were wiped, save that of the original Nephilim. The reasoning was that the original Nephilim were very few, and they would pass on soon enough anyway. And Mendel, Mendeln, Trangul, saved his saved him his memory so that he could remember the sacrifice his brother made, as well as teach any willing students the ways of balance. Serenthia is revived and Achilos is turned back into a living human because Odyssean sacrificing himself. This is a direct effect of Odyssean sacrifice and has nothing to do with the Angris Council or Mephisto. The Cathedral and Triune were no more. 
This, the reset world in the past from which the games take place, the first version with Oldesean, isn't recorded in any history, but it is known by few humans as well as angels and demons, naturally. The Dark Exile. So it came to be that there was a great revolution within the burning hells, known as the Dark Exile. The lesser evils overthrew the three prime evils and banished their spirit forms to the mortal realm. The demons, Belial, the lord of lies, Asmodan, the lord of sin, fought to claim rulership of hell during the absence of the three brothers. All of hell polarized between the factions of Belial and Asmodan, while the forces of the high heavens continually battered upon the very gates of hell. Asmodan, Belial, and Doriel and Duriel are the four lesser evils of hell. Whether Diablo and his brothers intended for it or not, the four lesser evils plotted and ultimately exiled the three primes into sanctuary. In their absence, Belial, the Lord of Lies, and Asmodon, the Lord of Sin, engaged in a civil war between themselves. Their war rages in the deepest pits of hell to this day. The Herodrum Tyrael learns of the three's exile into sanctuary and mobilizes to stop them. He creates the Herodrum, a collection of the most powerful humans, magi, including Jared Cain, Deckard Cain's ancestor, and Tal Rasha. Tyrael charges the Herodrum with the capture of the three prime evils, giving them soul stones to imprison the souls of Diablo and his brothers within. One by one, they find and imprison the primes. Unable to permanently destroy the demons, the Haradrim are forced to instead hide the soul stones. Their locations are as follows. Baal's soul stone, soul stone was imprisoned inside a huge tomb constructed with a single purpose, keep him in and others out. Baal had damaged his soul stone during his capture due to his destructive nature. Talrasha, knowing that the final shard of Baal's broken soul stone was not great enough to contain the prime evil, chose to use his own body as a prison for the prime. Lodging it into his chest and binding himself to a pillar, Talrasha remained in the tomb for centuries, containing the evil within. Mephisto's soul stone was sealed inside a temple in Kurost, although he had originally been captured in Aradoc along with Baal. Afraid to imprison the two primes so close to each other, the Haradrim chose to move him. The Zacharum monks were tasked with its protection. Ultimately, however, the soul stone corrupted the monks, and Mephisto took a host among them. Diablo had fled to the west and continued to evade capture for several decades. After his brother's capture, eventually he was captured near today's West March, and Haradrim built a cathedral above his tomb to stand guard. As time passed, however, the Haradrim fell apart, and no one else remembered the evil prisoned within. Diablo 1 Hail and sacrifice to Diablo, Lord of Terror and Destroyer of Souls. When I awake my master, his sleep, he attempted to possess a mortal's form. Diablo attempted to claim the body of King Leoric. But my master was too weak from his imprisonment. My lord required a simple and innocent anchor to this world, and so found the boy Albrecht, to be perfect for the task. While the good King Leoric was left maddened by Diablo's unsuccessful possession, I kidnapped his son Albrecht and found him before my master. I now await be rewarded when he at last emerges as the lord of this world. King Leoric a conjuring hero known a conquering hero known as Leoric established himself as king of Kanduras, a kingdom on the western continent of Sanctuary. He appointed Tristram as the capital of this kingdom and used the abandoned cathedral there as his throne and the central point of governance. Not soon after, King Leoric's most trusted advisor, Arch 
Bishop, Bishop Lazarus was drawn deeper into the cathedral by the Lord of Terror's soul stone. The archbishop, whether out of fear or temptation, shattered the soul stone, releasing Diablo's trapped spirit. Unable to take King Learch himself as a physical host, Diablo had Ar the Archbishop Lazarus kidnap the king's son, Prince Albrecht, and brought him down into the cathedral for Diablo to corrupt and use as his host to fully manifest the Lord of Terror. The king, already deranged from Diablo's attempts to possess him, went mad in his search for his lost son, sending many to their deaths out of suspicion of guilt. Ultimately, Lazareth led the town's warriors into the cathedral as a trap for the butcher. A minion wielding a bloody cleaver, King Leoric's physical form had withered away, but his soul found no peace and returned as a giant skeleton, still wearing his golden crown. Tristram's Hero Several heroes traveled to Tristram, hearing rumors of corrupting evil, vast riches, and arcane magic. The heroes were assisted in their journeys by Deckard Cain, a descendant of one of the Haradrim. Canonically, it was Aiden, the playable warrior character and the son of Leoric, who sought and ultimately vanquished Diablo. Thinking he was able to contend with its evil, Aiden forced Diablo's soulstone into his own forehead after returning to Tristram. The town's inhabitants celebrated their champion's victory, but Aiden had returned a much changed man, haunted by Diablo's essence. Aiden departed Tristram and traveled to the east for answers to his nightmares. Diablo 2 the vanquisher of Diablo finds himself taking refuge in a tavern from the blizzard, perhaps stirred by the other drunk men, or perhaps simply unable to contain the Lord of Terror within himself any longer. The tormented champion suddenly erupts into chaos. Demons and skeletons spawn and slay all within the tavern but one. Marius, a human bystander whom the wanderer urges to follow him for unknown reasons. Act one of the rogue encampment. So this is the uh, really the beginning of Diablo. The champion becomes the dark wanderer and begins to journey onwards toward the rogue monastery. Once there, he drives the sisters of the sightless eye out of their monastery and tasks Andariel with guarding of the pass from anyone who might follow. This disturbs Deckard Cain, who is deeply concerned that Andariel, once one of the demons that overthrew Diablo, now appears to be helping the prime evil. As did heroes arrive in Tristram to find adventure, glory, or riches, more arrive in the rogue encampment for similar reasons. A band of adventurers form and seek the monastery and the evils that lie within. From an overrun Tristram, they rescue Deckard Cain, who guides them on their way to the monastery where they defeat Andariel and find clear passage to loot Gulain. With Marius, the wanderer travels east to loot Gulain to search for the tomb of Talrasha and find Talrasha still imprisoned in the final chamber. Tyriel, however, having discovered the Wanderer's escape from Tristram, is there waiting for him. Tyriel and a now empowered Wanderer lock into combat. Bale, still trapped in Talrasha's body, notices that Marius is also present, and though the Prime Evil has deformed his host greatly in the years of imprisonment, he is powerful enough to trick Marius into seeing him as nothing but a chained human. He lures Marius into pulling the soul stone from Talrasha's chest, destroying Bale's prison. And Bale and his brother Diablo overwhelm Tyriel and trap him in the tomb. Summoning Duriel to prevent the Archangel from following, Tyriel, with no chance of pursuit, tasks Marius with taking Bale's soul stone and traveling to the eastern kingdom of Karast. There, the Archangel commands Marius to enter the portal of hell and destroy the soul stone at the hell forge. The band of heroes who had slain Andariel at the monastery now seek the tomb of Talrasha, where Baal, the Lord of Destruction, is said to be kept imprisoned. With the help of Cain and the Haradra cube, 
as well as loot Golane's inhabitants, the adventurers ultimately find their way to the Arcane Sanctuary. There, in that twisted reality, they find the Summoner, the entrance to the Canyon of Magi, and finally Talrosh's tomb. Having found the true tomb, the party defeats Duriel and frees Tyriel. Now forced to pursue the Dark Wanderer and Bale, the heroes sail east to Kurost, the city of the Zakarun. The Dark Wanderer, who's growing corruption by Diablo's spirit, continues to pervert his form, and Bale proceed to free their eldest brother, Mephisto, in Kurost. The last imprisoned prime evil was once given to the care of the Zakarum Church, but was able to corrupt the entire faith within his soul stone. And all but their highest leader, Kalim, the Kahagan, fell to his influence. The High Council, which had previously led the Order of the Paladins, became the arm of Mephisto in Sanctuary. Thus, the two evils had little trouble reaching their brother once they got to Kurost. Once again, united, the Dark Wanderer takes a new form as the Lord of Terror, Diablo, and the three open up the portal to Hell. Diablo is tasked with reclaiming Hell for their use, presumably from the warring Asmodon and Belial. Diablo steps through the portal and into Hell. Oblivious to the three, Marius has witnessed their meeting and his companion's transformation. Although charged by Tyriel to venture into Hell, he does not find the courage to do as the Archangel instructed. Instead, he retreats and finds Bastion in a mental asylum. Bale likely follows Diablo shortly afterwards, for when the player reaches the lowest level of Mephisto's Durance, Bale is not there. The three must be aware of the heroes pursuing them by now, for Mephisto has stayed behind to stop them. He is, however, defeated by the venturing band of heroes. His soul stone remains intact, and it is taken through the portal to hell. In Hell, the heroes find themselves operating out of the Pandemonium Fortress, which is the foremost bastion of heaven in their war against Hell. From here, the heroes are instructed to carry out three important missions. Seek Iswal, the fallen angel, and slay him for his betrayal. Seek the Hellforge and shatter Mephisto's soul stone. Seek Diablo in his sanctuary and vanquish him from the mortal realm. Iswal, at one point, was one of Tyriel's most celebrated lieutenants, until, going against the wishes of the Angris Council, has led an ill-fated assault upon the Hellforge. Attempting to stop the creation of Shadowfang, an evil weapon being created to com combat the Azure Wrath, the blade carried by Iswal himself. During the assault, he was captured and tortured for information. He gave in and spilled secrets of the heavens to the army armies of hell. Upon his return from the pits of hell, the Angris Council, angered by his disobedience and enraged by his betrayal, punished him by locking him, locking his form within a demon from the abyss and banished him into the void. Tyriel, give, Tyriel gives this quest and asks that Iswal be put out of his misery. Originally, he then appears to be miserable, but upon his death, Iswal tells the band of adventurers that he told the prime evils how to corrupt the soul stones and so helped them mastermind their own exile in his sanctuary. In truth, then, Iswal appears to have played a crucial part in the plot, and without him it is unlikely that the dark exile would have ever taken place. After having slain Iswal and shattered Mephisto's soul stone, the heroes now move toward Diablo. The Lord of Terror fortifies himself inside the Chaos Sanctuary. Its architecture is towering and gothic, but its purpose is unknown. The band of heroes defeat Diablo, and his soul stone is smashed at the Hellforge. Diablo now defeated, Bale seeks out Marius and finds him in the asylum. Disguised as Tyriel, Bill requests Marius cede the soul stone to him. He does, only to realize his grievous mistake moments later. Bale kills Marius and burns down the asylum. The failure of Marius does not bode well for Sanctuary. In the expansion pack, Bale, the last living prime evil, returns 
Fortunately for Bale, he was imprisoned in Tal Rasha, and the great Haradrim mage was one of the few who knew the exact location of the World Stone, the barrier hiding sanctuary from the other worlds. With the location revealed to him as Mount Ariat, he launches an all out assault upon it. His assault on Mount Ariat and the barbarians living there is a success. The human forces are overwhelmed by hell, and in the end, only one city, Herogroth, still stands. All but one of the town's elders, Nilathak, sacrificed themselves to raise a ward to block out all demons. Regardless, Bale is not impeded by this last town and moves on toward Mount Ariat. It is to this town that the heroes arrive, and from there they fight their way forward in Bale's tracks. Atop Mount Ariat lies the last protection of the World Stone, three barbarian heroes, Korlik, Madok, and Talik, who were once selected by the Nephilim, most likely Bulkathos, with some others, to stand guard over Mount Ariat and protect it from any who tried to enter without carrying the Relic of the Ancients. This relic was in the possession of the elders of Herogroth, and since they all died, it was left to Nilothak. Knowing this, Bale traded Nilothak this relic for an assurance of Herogroth's safety. Once in possession of the relic, he was able to freely pass the ancients. The heroes, not having the relic themselves, were therefore required to face the ancients as they followed Bale. Even though the ancients should likely aid humanity and even speak against Bale and his actions, still they fought with the heroes but were defeated and allowed the humans to pass into the Worldstone Keep. Within, Bale is found and killed, but they're not before he reaches the Worldstone and taints it. Tyriel appears next to the Worldstone and grants the heroes safe passage back to Herogroth, but must himself contend with the predicament of the corrupted world stone. Without any other option to save humanity, he hurls his flaming sword into the world stone and shatters it into an infinite number of pieces, its destruction appearing as if Tyrael had thrown a boulder into a lake of water, but the splashes and ripples were manifested as crystal shards. This is the end of Diablo II Lord of Destruction, and the destruction of the World Stone occurs 20 years prior to the events of Diablo III. As always, thank you for watching, and keep watching.